anything that runs in Africa is either food or a threat. Yeah. I know it's going to be intimidating. If you're in a large group, stick together so you look bigger. And you need to face that animal and walk back slowly. Get out of that danger area, get into that warning zone, get into that safe zone. Once you're in that safe zone, that elephant's going to leave you alone. If you do not adhere to this warning that this elephant's giving you, its behavior is going to change one more time. And then it's changing into a serious charge. Its behavior is going to be that its ears go flat against its body, its trunk is going to curl up underneath him, and he's going to be running silently towards you, making no noise at all. When he gets to you, he's going to do one of two things. He's either going to stampede all over you, or he's going to stop just in front of you, swipe you with his trunk and his tusks, he's going to land down on the ground, he's going to get over you, he's going to get down on one knee, and he's going to crush you with his forehead. Okay, you will not survive this. Although there was a gentleman up in the Kruger that did manage to survive this, he came across a large elephant bull that was a must. It knocked him down to the ground. After one minute, the gentleman was on his back, face up, with both sides of the tusks on either side of his body. After a minute and a half, the elephant's forehead was resting gently on the man's chest. Now, luckily for him, he had two things in his favor. It was a large tusker, and it was winter time as well. The elephant couldn't penetrate the ground anymore to proceed to crush the man. After two and a half minutes, it retracted its tusks out of the ground, turned around, and walked off. Mm. This gentleman is still alive today. But on a lighter note, does everyone enjoy the presentation? Yes. <laughs> okay, guys, I had one or two of you guys asking me about the elephants. Bussy and Gip. Bussy and Gip. These guys are with these elephants from 6 in the morning to 6 at night, rain or shine. They need to be with these elephants because these elephants demand human activity around them throughout the day. We do put them into a boma at night. We do not force them into this boma. They go there free willingly. You see, the boma is a safe haven during the night. They get food and water in the boma, and at first light, they're out of the boma. If we are not interacting with these elephants, they're free roaming elephants on our reserve, which is 23,000 hectares. The elephant handlers do not dictate where these elephants walk either. They walk behind these elephants. So they cover some distances with them during the day as well. Boys, how far do you walk with Rachel a day? Oh my God. Yes. So they're quite fit as well. You'll notice that none of these gents are carrying any weapons with them. We are a big five country, and these guys come into crashes of rhino, prides of lion, herds of buffalo, and herds of elephant. And they don't need any weapons with them. Why? Because they've got a five and a half ton bodyguard. <laughs> and that's the kind of relationship and bond that these guys have with these elephants. Just the other day, Rachel chased three mile lines away from these guys. So that's the kind of protection that they do get from the elephants. Both of the elephant handlers have been with these elephants for over 11 years. I had another elephant handler who was only here for a period of three and a half years. Unfortunately, he had to go back to his home country in Malawi. After he left, Rambo went to his hut for three and a half weeks, Aww. bent down on one knee Aww. to look at bears inside his hut. Aww. So that's the kind of bond and relationship <laughs> that they do form with the Ellie. Hmm. Okay, guys, we just want to show you a water demonstration. We're not going to wet you. I need everyone to come up over here just on the fence line. 